Hello and welcome to Restoration DIY. And whether you're new or returning, it's great to have you here and I hope you enjoy the video. This week I'll be making a bowl from segmented rings and three color epoxy resin. So without further ado, let's get into it. You join me whilst I'm assembling the segmented rings. The segments are spares from previous projects and have been accumulating for a number of weeks. So I decided to make good use of them and turn them into this project. In total, I had enough to make up five rings of various sizes. Three of the five rings are made of ash. These would make up the base. Then there'll be a resin midsection and next a sapili ring topped off with a larger oak ring for the rim. Each one was glued with tight bond two and I used a hose clamp to hold them together and squeeze the joints nice and tight. The oak segmented ring has a diameter of around 375 millimeters, 15 inches, which will make this the biggest bowl I've ever made. So with that in mind, I didn't hold back on the glue, especially on the oak segments, which soaked it up. With all five rings glued up, they were placed to one side to allow the glue to cure. Next, I had to cast the epoxy resin midsection. For this, I used a silicon baking mold with another smaller one placed inside it weighed down with a random bowl blank and some weights. The colours for this project were sapphire blue, crystal green and tapestry red. With both parts of the resin in three batches, the colours were added and each was thoroughly mixed. These were then left to pre-cure, then poured into the mould. Unfortunately, I can't show you any of that. When the time came, I got carried away and I forgot to press record. It's the next day and the segmented rings are ready for sanding. To make them nice and flat, each one is passed through the drum sander multiple times. The large oak ring only needed to be done on one side. Each one takes about five minutes to do, so I won't show them all being done, but if you're interested, with each pass, the sander removes around 1 64th of an inch, or a bit less than half a millimetre. And with the casting removed from the pressure pot, I checked for any cracks or voids, and it all looked good. So this was also passed through the sander to flatten and level both sides. So on with the glue up. First the top two rings. These were done with type bond two. A liberal layer was added, then the Sapili ring was placed on top. I used hot melt glue to hold it in position and this was put to one side on a level surface with lots of weights to squish the joint. The base rings were next. I used super glue on these because I'd be pouring a resin core on the same day. If I used tight bond, I would have to wait for another 24 hours before casting. Once they were glued, I added a piece of sapili to the centre core. This was deliberately undersized to form a resin border, which looks nice, and I would also be able to expose it in the pedestal. I used mixing sticks and super glue to hold it in place, and I also added a piece of plywood to the base to seal the void. This was held in place with super glue and hot melt glue, so hopefully it wouldn't leak. I 
Put the base in a bucket to catch any leaks. Then I mixed a full batch of resin with sapphire blue mica powder. And when it was done, I poured it into the base. But it occurred to me that some of it would be soaked up by the ash. So I used a spacer and hot melt glue to form a raised reservoir. This I hoped would keep the base topped up until it cured. It's the next day and the base spent the night in the pressure pot. At first glance all looked well. The resin was a bit lower than I'd intended, but I could fix that later. For now, all I had to do was remove the plywood and hot melt glue from the base and the top. The sander was the obvious choice to get rid of the unwanted bits, but what a mistake that was. Sanding on this creates heat, and heat melts hot glue. So after a few passes, I completely gummed up the sandpaper, and not even the rubber abrasive cleaner could shift it. So with no other option, it was over to the lathe. So with the blank securely fixed between centers, I set to cleaning it up. First to go was the resin on the underside. This hadn't leaked, it's what was left over. I just poured it in to consolidate the lower segmented ring. Using the full size carbide and the ball gouge, I was soon through to the segmented ring. I was just gonna clean up each end, but part way through doing the top, I decided to cut the mortise whilst I was here. To cut the mortise, first I defined the outer edge with a quarter inch parting tool, cleaning out a lot of the inner material with the same tool. Then I lightly skimmed the underside to make sure it was flat. And then I cut the dovetail with a dovetail cutter. And then when that was done, I sanded from 80 to 400 grit and added a finish topped off with Hampshire Sheen gloss finishing wax. And with a blank turned around, I finished leveling the top. I now could fully assemble the blank. I mixed a small amount of rapid setting epoxy with blue colorant. This was spread evenly on one side of the resin midsection. Then the base was placed on top, twisting it to get even contact and remove any air bubbles. After 20 minutes or so, I mixed another small amount of epoxy, coloured the same, and spread that around the upper rim section, and then the two pieces were married together and left for another 30 minutes. The joint tended to slip and slide, so I had to keep checking it and adjusting as necessary, but once it had cured, I fixed it to the lathe. I turned the lathe up to around 450 RPM and began getting the blank balanced. And I have to be honest, I was really surprised how well it had gone together. The rim was first and there wasn't a lot to be cut away. Then I started on the Sapili ring, removing just enough to get rid of the last bit of wobble. Then it was onto the resin midsection. Using the full-size carbide, I began shaping the resin midsection. At this point, I really didn't know how the finished piece would look. I could see a rough shape, but you have to remember this is made up from spare parts from other projects. The rim, for example, was going to be for a dizzy ball, which I didn't do. And the three rings in the base were too big to fit the project they were meant for. And the sapili was too big for another. The resin midsection is only there to bridge the different diameters of the rings it sits between. So this is definitely a design that developed as it went along. With 
With a lot of the resin cut away, I moved on to the base section. I'd been thinking about alternative ways to shape it, but in the end, a pedestal with a deep cutout to expose the resin core seemed the best way to go. Using a 3 8 bowl gouge, I cut into the ash segments, working on opposite sides of the cut, making the cutout deeper and wider with each pass. Because this was a heavier bowl, I knew at this stage I wouldn't be cutting all the way down to the resin core. That would be done after I'd finished turning the rest of the bowl. So to leave some strength in the pedestal, I cut in about halfway and moved on to the upper section. ring was next. I'd left this till now and with the lower part taking shape I had a better idea of how it should look. Using the bowl gouge a sheer scrape material away to form a sweeping curve from the resin up into the underside of the oak rim. To get a better idea of proportion, I thinned the base, removing around quarter of an inch, six millimeters from the edge, and running it into the cutout, then shear scraping to blend it in. This is where I came across a problem. I was overreaching the gouge, which caused it to vibrate, which in turn left ripples on the surface. This was easily fixed by moving the tool rest nearer to the workpiece. Then I went back to shaping the underside of the rim. This was an important part of the design, and it had to be just right. So once I had the profile roughly where it needed to be, I switched to the small negative rake scraper, blending the three pieces into one flowing curve. I undercut the oak rim, leaving a slight droop to the outer edge, and the large negative rake scraper finished off the profile, removing the deeper tool marks and fairing the surface. The base was still on the thick side, so I thinned it down a bit more to better match the rim. Again, using the bowl gouge to do the initial cut, then shear scraping to blend it in. But knowing I was coming back to this later, I finished with some sanding with 80 grit to check for any tool marks, and then I set about shaping the inside. Moving on to the inside, and from this angle, I think you can get a good idea of just how big this bowl is. And the size dictates the lathe speed. So this bowl was turned at speeds between 450 and 600 RPM, whereas smaller bowls are turned at speeds up to around 1000 RPM. There are many factors that determine speed, but as a general rule, the bigger they are, the slower they need to be turned. The first area to be done was the rim. I wanted to remove as much weight as I could. This makes it safer to work with and removes any sharp edges which could snag my left hand or catch the turning tools. Using the bowl gouge, I shear scraped the upper two segmented rings and when they were roughly to shape, I switched to the Easywood Tools full-size finisher to remove material from the resin midsection. The carbide tool began to chatter because it was overreaching. So I changed the tool rest. This got me much closer to the workpiece and made it much easier to hog out the resin. Also, it would have helped if I could have moved the tailstock out of the way, but with something this big and heavy, I didn't want to risk it, and I decided safety was the better option. Using the carbide, I gradually thinned down the resin. For this project, I was heading for a sidewall thickness on the thick side of 10 millimeters or 3 eighths of an inch. 
I also had to keep an eye on the join between the sapele and the midsection. This was already as thin as I wanted it to be. There was still a bit more work to be done to the rim. You can see patches of glue that had to be removed and the overall profile needed to be refined. For this, I went back to the gouge, scraping the surface, sweeping the curve up from the resin out towards the edge of the rim. Finished blending and fairing the surface, I switched to the freshly sharpened skew chisel. The trick with this is to keep the blade moving perpendicular to the surface, being careful not to dig in with the ends of the tool. The last bit to be done was to cut away the excess from the Sapili core. Up to now, the tailstock had been in the way, but with the rest of the inside finished, I would have to remove it to get access. I started with a bowl gouge, carefully cutting away the waste. If I got a catch at this point, it would probably rip the bowl off the chuck. So with that in mind, it wasn't long before I switched to the small negative rate scraper. This is much less likely to snag the surface. Final go with the scrapers and the inside was done. And then a quick once over with 80 grit sandpaper. And then it was back to the pedestal to expose the resin core. With the tailstock back in place securely holding the bowl, I began cutting away the ash segments. The bowl gouge removed the bulk of the material and with a blue resin just poking through, I switched to the quarter inch parting tool. This was well past its safe reaching distance, but I was soon through to the core. The base needed a bit more work. The overall diameter was okay, but it needed a bit of reprofiling from the core to its outer edge. Rather than just a straight line, I wanted the surface to have a slightly sweeping curve up towards the blue resin which I did with a bowl gouge. I thought I was almost done, so I used a skew chisel to blend and fair the surface, and then I used the parting tool to clean the last bit of rubbish from the cutout, but this revealed some damage, which would need repairing. I mixed some rapid set epoxy with blue mica powder and applied it to the small void and cracks in the core. I got plenty on, then left it for 30 minutes to fully cure. Once cured, I trimmed the repair down with a parting tool, taking thin slices off until it was level with the rest of the core. Then I cleaned the rest up with a bowl gouge. Whilst waiting for the repair to cure, I'd filled a few tiny holes with black star bond. These were quickly finished off with a carbide and a large negative rate scraper, and then I sanded both inside and out from 80 to 600 grit, continuing up to 3000 grit on the resin. Then I cleaned down with denatured alcohol. was quickly followed with two coats of sanding sealer, both denibbed with a non-abrasive scotch pad. And next up, Yorkshire Grit, a single application, thoroughly cleaned away until no more residue is picking up on the paper towel. resin polishing, beginning with Merca Polar Shine 10. Just one coat, cleaned away, ready for the next stage. Polar 
Shine 5, another single application polished off to leave a deep shine. And to finish, Hampshire Sheen Gloss Finishing Wax. Two coats, buffed to seal and protect the surface. And that's it, another project finished. And I really like this one, and I hope you like it too. As I said at the beginning, this was a collection of spare segmented rings from other projects that were never meant to be put together. But the end result looks great. The three different wood species sit well with one another, complemented by the three color resin in the midsection and pedestal. And I'm really happy with how it turned out. So with that said, I'd like to thank you all for watching. Please subscribe, it really helps the channel out. A thumbs up will be much appreciated and comments are always welcome. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye for now.